This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show X. So 658 Tuesdays we've been uh, talking about uh, professionalized wrestling here on a Tuesday night form and some dig- digital format. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Uh, Sorgatron Media, Pittsburgh, PA, all the stats. With us, first of all, from Beacon, New York, he is the only Mayhemmer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. And starring the men of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, musical guest producer Missy. She is a she is a fine singer. That does that does track absolutely. How you doing, I'm Mike? Well aware. Hi, I, I'm 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 okay. I'm okay. <laughs> the Iconics got to have a match on SmackDown. Whoa. They got a win. They got a win. Whoa. Okay. It's like an Australian Revolution, Sorg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> from Australia. And also we have a newbie <laughs> on the show this week. We have Nick Farah, announcer. Hey guys. Wrestling announcer over there at Black Diamond Wrestling. Actually, announcer and commentator lately. Yeah. yeah I've been so, wearing two hats. You've been wearing two hats. Two hats. Uh thank you for joining us. Not a problem. I'm I'm excited to be here. Excellent. Really. Uh, got you on here uh, again. We've been working together over at Black Diamond since October. Yeah. So uh, and uh, I think it's high time to get you in here. Yeah, so I, mean, I definitely appreciate it. So uh, awesome. and 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 I don't and man, are you getting into something for the last week of Mayhem Mania? It's last week. It's the last week of Mayhem okay. Mania before Patreon in the bank. Okay. <laughs> so what you put on that board? He's looking at the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit. Uh, God, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> that's okay we oh messed, it's okay we, we, it's we, gonna get messed up we've messed this up plenty already uh and wait till next week uh but anyways it is the wrestling mayhem show you can find everything at wrestling show.com or you can find links to subscribe to us on uh podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform you can hit us at the email address at good times good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412-206-WMS0 Tweet us that Mayhem Show and on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. On that Facebook page is where we stream every Tuesday night live at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we're also streaming on some Sorgatron Media formats out there like Twitch and uh, Periscope and YouTube if you're over there. And want to be part of the conversation, please hop over into the chat room over on the Facebook page. That is where we are watching the chat room. Uh, thank you to our streaming partners, the405media.com, that replays us every single evening at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, midnight Eastern Time, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. Again, this is really ramping up here. Um, a lot of movements are going on here. And is this all updated, Producer Missy? Because I thought there was some... Oh, no, no, I see the new names in there. Never mind. Um, fan of the show, Dollar Lover, our friends at Bo. Giggity! Woo! Woo! Uh, Ed Burke, Bobby <laughs> FJ Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And at the Pocky Club, $5 level is uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, Dave Podner, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery. That's right, Daniel Tiger's a part of this now. Uh, at the Pizza Club, $10 level, TheWrestlingRevolution.com. And the manager at the $20 level... Point is, money where his mouth is, is Mad Mike. So, I uh, I did the new math. I now new... own 23.8% of the show. 23.8% of the Wrestling Mayhem show belongs mm-hmm. to Mad Mike. 23.8%. What, what does that mean? Like, what can you do? It means I should get a move on the last day before the <laughs> <on> day. <laughs> I, I think, mean, I think, that means you, you, I think that means you can petition for, for that for sure. I, I, I think I should. Yes. I think it's a, you can always tell when it's a Patreon in the bank season. You have one more week left to do that. I don't know what the cutoff date is going to be, probably like the morning of or the day before. Uh, but if you want to participate in Patreon in the bank for Mayhem Mania, it is the most heated fan t- participation moment of the year 
here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You guys can do that at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So we should just do this every month. Yeah, we probably should at this point. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Coming I, soon, Mayhem Slam. Mayhem Slam. Uh, or no, Mayhem Fest. Mayhem in the Bank. Uh, mayhem, mayhem, Fest. mayhem Fest. Exactly. So, you know, who can put, who can book a better Raw? Well, um, hold on. <laughs> we Can we ask people in comatose states? They can? Yeah. Okay, they can too. People in comas can book a better Raw. Oof. Speaking of wrestling for this week, some of the news. Becky Lynch is the man, and Becky Lynch also uh, helped a fan suffering a seizure during a public appearance. Becky Lynch is great, you guys. <laughs> in the year of the man 2019, we should be so lucky to have someone like her on our screens. It, it's like her legend persists and just keeps growing organically over the last few months, hasn't it? And well, she uses head and shoulders. She doesn't use head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you also bothered by the head and shoulders commercial with Becky Lynch that's all over now? Slightly, but yeah, I have a it. feeling... It's better than what her Snickers commercial would have been. That is true. There's a commercial? Yeah, there's a Head and Shoulders commercial that plays like over the matches. With her in it. With her in it. What, yep. Where Where have I been? Have you been is this on SmackDown Live? Well, it, it, this on, no, only on happened Raw. once on Raw. This oh. only happened once on Raw. So yep. it's it's new. I thought it was more than once. I thought I saw it a couple new. of times. No? Mm. Sorg? Mm. I'd know. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> Mike would know. This is true. Yeah. Um... Jeez. <laughs> Musical guest. No, 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 no. Uh, no but, but seriously, like between like this kind of stuff and 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 Becky's kind of rise, like who has had this organic, you know, uh, thing happen like this, you know, since Stone Cold, right? Well, I mean, there have been people who have had it. They just necessarily haven't followed through as much as they are with Becky, because mm-hmm. Braun was on this trajectory last year. Oh, absolutely. And then they just completely cut it off, and he teamed with a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. now he's teaming with Colin Jost, who is essentially a 10-year-old. Mm. Comparatively, size-wise. Okay. Is it, is it, is it, is, I see, see that he's in the, like, the Andre Battle Royal or something. Did that get announced? Sure. Sure. Why not? Sure. So he's on the pre-show. Yay. Go Braun. <laughs> no, so, Dave Dave Potter and Kevin were saying Daniel Bryan five years ago. That wasn't organic. That wasn't necessarily organic because if certain people didn't leave certain things, that wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the the his getting popular was organic, yes, but the only reason they followed through was because. Uh, of what happened at the Rumble. Mm-hmm. And Brandon, we do not say that name on the show. Uh, yeah, uh, Mad Mike has a permanent ban on Ronda Rousey's uh, husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had an eliminator, I'd throw him in there. Well, he's also banned from the shows, apparently. So. He who shall not be <laughs> Good. named. He who shall not be named. Yeah. It, if someone had to book him at Mayhem Mania, it would be against Walter. Hmm? Walter. Walter. Yeah. Just slap him to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I know how you thought about that. Uh, anyways, so Sorg, I don't, I don't take kind to people who are abusive to women. Mm-hmm. I don't take kind to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, I was curious who this person was, and I started looking up stories, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's it's, fantastic. He, it, uh, he's a garbage person. Mm. He's a garbage person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, um, I and I thought it'd be interesting to look at. We're four weeks out from WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. We have a card, at least like the you know the the what, what's going to well, be the main stuff. It sounds like we only have half the card. I know. What, what is the rumor? How many matches do we suppose? Seventeen matches. We think there's going to be seventeen matches on WrestleMania. Yes. What? How long we- is the show running for? Is that um, like a seven? Day? It actually already started. It will end on my birthday in April. <laughs> <laughs> that seems about right. Um, so uh, that's a lot, guys. 
That, I mean, that seems like the, the, the like the, the list. That's a band list for Warp Tour that has multiple stages. Yeah. I really I, hope it doesn't <laughs> rain. Oh, no. What, do the multiple arenas? What? No, and this is no this is this no, is at I WrestleMania mean, met life. Yeah, but you were talking about the multiple stages. I mean, didn't wasn't it WrestleMania three who did that? With uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania two. two. WrestleMania yeah. two. Which they always say they always say how Chicago hosted three WrestleManias. It's more like two and a third. Yeah. 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 Well, like, they say New York hosted multiple ones too, when really that was Long Island. Mm-hmm. Like New York City has only hosted three WrestleManias proper. Um, Ronnie's saying 17 matches. He can't even watch three, three hours of Raw. Yeah, that's gonna be. It's gonna <laughs> that's be fair. Tough. I hope your WrestleMania. But, but I party mean, the or... way the way WWE pay per views have been going, Raw is only gonna have four matches. Everything else is gonna be SmackDown. <laughs> Amazingly, SmackDown or right? Legends. Amazingly, right? Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Alex is saying that 12 of those matches will be five minutes or less. In- in length, I so it's not for ourselves. I severely doubt that. No, hey, you'll be surprised. Yeah, they, they give they give a lot of time. You know, it's going to be like twelve minute matches, right? Yeah, for the most. Uh, part. Except the Triple H match, will be, which will be twenty five. Yeah, exactly. So, it should it should be twelve. It will be twenty five. I mean, you, it, go ahead. Do you think it's going to be able like that match? Do you think it's going to be able to go the full length and keep people interested though? Or? Oh no, heavens no, no, <laughs> but it will. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's, I, I have nothing, I have nothing against Batista. You know, I grew up watching Batista. He was one of the big guys, um, you know, in, you know, my era that I grew up in. And it's just like his first run after he came to SmackDown. Like, you, you remember, you remember when Batista was running with Devon? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he went over to Raw. They did Evolution. Uh, and then they broke up Evolution one by one. And then whenever he came back to SmackDown, I was totally into it. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is great. He got hurt by Mark Henry. And then he came back. He, he was a great when, baby face for that period. And, and, and I mean, I'm not going to say that Eddie passing helped that. But in a sense, that did help Ray and it did help Batista. Mm-hmm. It helped them get over better. I mean, at least in my opinion. Well, weren't they also tag champs at that time, they, too? After. Okay. I mean, I, I I like Batista. Like, I think Batista's had some really good runs. Mm-hmm. He has. Mm-hmm. But the the thing about Batista, and this has always been the thing about Batista, his matches have a shelf life. Mm-hmm. Like, once you... And I'll say it's the same thing with Roman Reigns. Once you go past 15 minutes, it gets real repetitive and boring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and again, somebody, um, you know... The Rock coming back and doing a match is, you know, it is The Rock. He can come back and do a match, right? right? Like he, he's he's on a kind of an upper upper echelon of entertainment and talent. Mm-hmm. Batista coming back and doing a one off match, well, I don't know if I'm as excited about that or, or seeing mm-hmm. him pull off that something like that. I think at the end of the day, it honestly comes down to: is this going to be? a farewell match for Triple H or is it going to be Batista? Mm-hmm. I, no, I, probably just for Batista. Probably. You, you think we're going to see Triple H next year at WrestleMania? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think he's kind Absolutely. of... Absolutely. He's the mainstay. It's it's like it's like he's the one that can't go away. It's like how McMahon became a bad guy Yeah. because nobody could take him away. Right. No, That's, but see, but, the thing is, he absolutely can go away. Mm-hmm. Like, it ain't difficult. He well, just I mean, doesn't have to book himself in a match. True. See, like, he controls that. I'd actually rather see Triple H wrestle at NXT. That would be that would something. Be awesome. Like, mm-hmm. could you imagine a renegade NXT champion who doesn't, like, uh, keep to the ideals of NXT, who doesn't um, cater to the fans of Full Sail, who openly mocks them and everything like that? Like, could you imagine that and... Triple H, like Big Daddy of NXT, going to take his ass down. Like that we, is a story I want to see. Like we see at so many indie promotions, where the, exactly you know the, the 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 lead guy who's retired, you know, and trained all these guys, you know, is is not not cool. Brandy K, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and comes back uh, to, 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 
exact some some vengeance and, and and defend his brand right right so exactly that'd be awesome see i can definitely respect the whole thing of triple h coming back and doing the one-off i mean he did this what was that saudi arabia mm-hmm. tour he did that and then you know he's been away for a while and then he came back in pittsburgh uh well he came back in philly then he came back in pittsburgh the following week yeah and i think the only thing that's throwing me off that's damaging his credibility to me when he came out and he called out Batista, um, it kind of threw me for a loop that they announced him as the COO instead of the game. If you're coming out and you you know you want to be that fighter, mm-hmm. at least you know from my viewpoint, don't don't call him the COO. Mm-hmm. Call him the game. If he's coming out as the game, he's ready to fight. He's ready to do this. Yeah, call him well, as he should be. It it all depends on what he's wearing. He was in his street clothes, wasn't he? No. No, he was in a suit. He was in a suit, and the, the first time he popped up in Philly. Yeah, in tr- Philly, trust me. But when he came when, to Pittsburgh, when he comes out in his terrible leather jacket, <laughs> they call him. They call him the game. They called him the COO in Pittsburgh, and he was in the leather jacket. Mm. He was ready to go whenever he called um, all the guys, the Guardians, of the independent scene. Like he was. Oh, but that was the face to face, right? Well, if you want to call it uh, that. the relatively face to face, yes. Okay. That was the face to heal, right? <laughs> bad guy 101 from Batista. I still don't know who's the good guy and the bad guy in this one. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess Batista's the heel. He because, would have to be because of the Ric Flair incident. But then he comes out and says, that, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess he would be because of the triple A or the, the Ric Flair incident. Yeah. But I'm not really sold on it. I think it would have been better if he would have came back and he would have done, you know, because he keeps saying, give me what I want, give me what I want. Mm-hmm. The reason he quote unquote quit last time was because he didn't he never got his one on one match from the Royal Rumble mm-hmm. for the championship. Mm-hmm. Honestly, at this point right now, as as bad as this sounds, I would love to see Batista versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania for the Universal Title. You know what? One, I don't hate that. I really don't mind that. Mm-hmm. As far as like a feature match, I kind of don't want it for the title. Have but, we? Uh, have we ever yeah, seen but, that? I don't know that we have. See, that's the thing. I, I would love to see Brock Lesnar in any number of matches. Mm-hmm. I just want that title far away from him. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, you, you want you want a little trivia contest, Sork? A mm. L- little trivia fun time? Here we so go. I was talking about Brock Lesnar earlier. Uh, when was the last match Brock had on TV? <laughs> um, Raw and on SmackDown. I'll, 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 go, I'll go both shows. Raw and on SmackDown? Didn't he have yeah. one a couple years ago? No, just take a guess. Was that Heath Slater? 2012. 2012? Okay. Uh, and and the other guesses? I'll go 2013 because it's, I mean, it's been at least that. What, when did oh. the when did the brand switch happen? Or the, okay. brand, the brand split? The latest one? The latest one. Like two years ago, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Didn't he have the match against Heath Slater where he said, I don't give a damn about your kids? Didn't that turn into a match or did, or did Heath Slater? No, that wasn't a match. That was just him beating up Heath Slater. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was great though. Um, so, so Brock Lesnar's last match on SmackDown, Mm -hmm. SmackDown, um, was in 2004 Mm -hmm. against Hardcore Holly. Was that when he broke his neck? No, 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 no. no. That was, that was, that was was the run up to WrestleMania 20. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last match he had on Raw was in 2002. It was a Singapore Kane match against Tommy Dreamer. Jeez. It's been that long. Yes. Those are the last matches Brock has had on free television. And he's been your champion for how many years? Interesting how things change. Yep. Well, we do have a mainstream Matt. He is settling in here, uh, hanging out in the studio. And uh, we'll, we'll look at him settled in. Were you listening on the way in, sir? I know that's unsafe. What are you well, uh, listening? Is Listening is safe. Commenting is not safe. That's you, know, right. you know, the Bluetooth... You reach a certain age, and your 100% reliability on using Bluetooth, is, it, it starts to diminish. So, yeah, that's me on my way in. So, I'm sorry. I missed the conversation on the way How in. are you feeling about WrestleMania going into it here? Four weeks <laughs> out. Mm. I mean, comparatively, I know you're, you're, you're pouring over Mayhem Mania. Well, you know, I know, you know, my wrestle son, The Riz, hates when I keep talking about this. But, you know, I was at WrestleMania last year. Mm-hmm. I traveled down there, finally went to my first WrestleMania with my wife and with Mad Mike. We went. And um, 
and my wife and I were just talking today and we were like, aren't you glad we went to WrestleMania last year? Cause we could end up going up to, you know, what if we ended up picking this year, we'd be up at MetLife freezing our asses off watching this seven hour, whatever, yeah, you, yeah, you know, you definitely, you couldn't have seen me and I got to see you last year. Yeah, but I could have taken you around my city. Well, we'll have a we'll have a chance sometime. You know, when it's warm. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll we'll see your city. I'm going to show you my city. You sound like Scarface. I'm going to show you my Miami. I'm going to show you my New York. Yeah, um, no, that's exact. <laughs> everyone has a version of their own New York. Yeah, the Mad Mike's version of his New York is fun. And I do want to see Mad Mike's New York. And um, but I, you know, but I'm look. New Orleans was amazing. That WrestleMania last year was long, but. Overall, very memorable, very amazing, and um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like I made the right choice going last year as opposed to this year. This year is not quite doing it for me quite as much. No, it doesn't quite have the same juice. What, what about the addition of Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio? You know, I mean, that's nice. With added Dominic. Dominic? Custody what? of Dominic? Wait, what? Do- Dominic was on SmackDown. No. And Dominic is like... A foot and a half taller than Ray. <laughs> yes, he and is. Jo- and Joe's gonna choke him. I out. saw him at Lucha great. Underground. And I'm just like, that is a large son. <laughs> Joe's son. gonna choke out Dominic. And Are it's we sure be he's not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through this already. <laughs> and, and Sorg, Sorg, this confirms my theory. At least, th- this gives more credence to my theory that I, ha- that I said last night on the about Kurt Angle. Hmm. Which theory was that for review? Um. So last night, everyone's up in arms about this whole Kurt Angle, Baron Corbin thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone's up in arms like, oh, Baron Corbin, he sucks. And, and you're right. But <laughs> what I think is going to happen is I think Kurt Angle is going to be Baron Corbin in two minutes. And I think Kurt is going to get on the microphone and thank the fans. And then all of a sudden we hear, and we almost literally have an exact copy of the ruthless aggression thing from when John Cena debuted. And we get a nice six to seven minute Kurt Angle, John Cena match and angle makes Cena tap out. And it's great. I love this. I love this scenario. I love, <laughs> I love this fever dream scenario of WrestleMania that you have. Like I want, I want it to be, I want it to be a thing so bad. So it's almost like I'm pretty good at making matches sometimes. So sometimes. I, I wish someone would give me an opportunity to do something like that. Rules are rules. You know? <laughs> 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 there are no rules. There are rules. There are no rules. Just there are constantly being rules. added to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, you know where we have a lot less rules or varying rules like pasta death matches and so much more. Is over at IndieWrestling.us and www.IndieWrestling.network, where right now, actually for free, we have posted the majority of the Pasta Deathmatch from Prospect Pro Wrestling. Have you seen this? I think about 2,000 people have watched this already. Um, it is it is chess flex or is Mambo Italiano in a Pasta Deathmatch. Find out what um, that means over the Indie Wrestling US YouTube and Facebook page and watch more Prospect Pro Wrestling and Uprise Wrestling and Rise and Black Diamond and IWC, including the uh, last match in IWC of DJZ. We'll be posting this bah, week bah, bah, bah. as part of IWC 18. It's about half edited, uh, FYI. Uh, stay tuned for all of that. You can sign up. Check it out with your seven day free trial at www.indiewrestling.com. Dot network or click the link over at indie wrestling dot us and find out all the stuff over there on vod mike you have questions about pasta death matches i actually do yes mm-hmm. um so <coughs> i i'm glad that we, we've podcasted long enough to know that you knew i had a question about pasta death yes match. yes um did someone have a black velvet bag full of sharp spiral pasta and sprinkle it in the ring like thumbtacks um, not out of a bag. It was straight from the giant eagle box. Okay, uh, but they right. were they were they were but there, but there was actually a bed. You know, there's like the bed of nails. Uh-huh. There was yeah. a bed of noodles. Ooh, I like mm. it. Yes. I like it. Okay, it okay, was very good. And and uh, our buddy Pump Ferrari came out as Pump Boy RD. Um, uh, may, may I may I present an idea for a sequel? I think they. Oh, pasta, oh I think there's already match. some ideas for sequels. All right, um, Sorg, my idea is a Taipei Penny match. 
Taipei Penny Match. (laughs) The two competitors wrap their fists in masking tape and they dip their hands into broken penny shells. Oh. Jeez. I think the commission's going to shut us down on that one. Mm. (laughs) Jeez. So I'm just throwing it out there. Put it out to the people who you know. Taipei Penny match. Or Penne, excuse me. I'm a bad Italian. Taipei Penne match. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, now I get it. That's funny. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was. <laughs> Ta- try saying Taipei Penne. And it, do- it, doesn't, it doesn't flow as well as you'd like it to, but. I love it. Because I'm thinking Penne La Vodka, you know, that. But Taipei I Penne. Think says penny, I, I think, I think the, that's. Uh, Force Gump. In <laughs> fact, you know, <laughs> instead of Johnny Penne, <laughs> I, I may just save that idea for Mayhem Mania for and Patreon on the back next week. Whatever the next, <laughs> whatever the next Penne match, whatever the next chapter is, there it's coming on Indie <laughs> Wrestling. God, I just I want to see I want to see the graphic Garza would make for that. Oh jeez, <laughs> hey Patreon in the bank. Are we gonna have a t- pasta death match? Who knows? Who knows? We might now. We <laughs> might now. <laughs> yeah, we've had some odd stipulations over the years. We, we've had what? We've had some odd. We stipulations. have had some odd stipulations uh-huh. over this. I'm up with this. Hey, there's some work being done next door. I <laughs> I don't know if it's coming over the microphones right now, uh, but if you are catching anything in the background, that's what's happening. Uh, I might get sorted out later. I it's don't know. It's slowly driving it's, sword it's insane. It's slowly driving me yeah. insane. It's like it's boring into my head. <laughs> but, you know, uh, but what other, you know, business is running at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. at night in, in Beachview? But, yeah, what kind of business is, has its lights on at this time of night? Here, I know. So like... Oh, I know. Like, it's like what, the, what we do. So, but um, anyways, um, I'm just going to keep talking over it. Uh, so, we... <laughs> We have uh, we have a couple other stories. Like a little bit of a slight local focus. First of all, our friend DJZ. No longer a free agent. We talked about a little bit last night on the wrap up, but uh, he had his last match uh, at uh, IWC 18. Our friends uh, Jimmy DeMarco, Facade, uh, Jason Gore, a part of that tag team match. And uh, and uh, he had a great speech there. Could not tell us on Saturday, but it hit the news on um, Friday. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, today. Mo- what was it today? Yesterday. Monday. Monday. It, it was yeah. Monday it hit. Uh, that he is officially um, WWE bound, NXT bound. So uh, I'm wh- very excited. Whether he will still be DJZ or whatever format they're going to do with that, uh, it'll be interesting to see. But he's, he's going well, for it. So. Well, there's no longer a TJP, so I think we're in the clear. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever, have you ever heard a rumor that you were so excited about that you didn't want to think about it because you were afraid that you would you would jinx it with your own like subconscious thought? That's uh-huh. where I was with the whole DJZ thing for about a, a couple of weeks since I first heard that <laughs> it was maybe a real possibility, and I got really nervous and uh-huh. I just like clung to my rosary beads and, and just did all that good stuff and. And now that it's signed, sealed, delivered, I'm I'm so excited, so That's excited. That's great. That's great. So good luck to him. I mean, now we can have our wild speculation start. Uh, and yes, I believe he would be in play. Well, he was with. When well, he was, he was already. Agent, he was already been used. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think he's even more probably in play now. Now that he's a, a, a signee with WWE. And everyone has <sighs> rightly pointed out that Robbie E is also now under the NXT umbrella. So. Oh, is he? They're they're two thirds of the way there. Oh they can wow. Be reuniting the bromans, you know. Oh my. If oh there's my one God, thing the, the pro bromance. wrestling community has been clamoring for. <laughs> it's a no. bromans re- Matt. reunion. What? Matt. Yes. We have Bromance 2020 team the two of them with Matt Riddle. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, Bromance 2000. We are we are through <laughs> the looking glass here. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, we've been we've been kind of poking at the idea of Elias needing a DJ. Um, you know, it makes sense. I still want to see Electric Mayhem. Electric Mayhem. Yep. I just DJ's want to see Elias get through a full song. What's that? I just want to see Elias get through a full song. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. That you don't have to download from iTunes. Um, he he did on Fastlane. He did on Fastlane. He did on Fastlane. He got he got through a whole song on Fastlane. <laughs> he said, "Well, that's my time, guys." 
and then all hell broke loose. <laughs> well, see, I was watching. Oh, I was I was at Raw uh, whenever they were in Pittsburgh, and you couldn't help but feel the guy. Feel for the guy. Mm-hmm. He comes out. He starts running his promo. Um, plays a little bit. I can't remember exactly what happened. It was a long night. I can't remember exactly what happened. Oh, that, but he went it to was go, the conga line. It was yeah, the what? That was the, oh, it was the conga line. line. Yeah, it was. Well, he went to go pull for a mic. Mm-hmm. And like he's just calling for it and calling for it. And they're just shaking his head, shaking their head at him. Like, yeah. just no. And he's just like snapping. He's like, you know, what, what, you know you're in your hometown. Yeah. You want to get as much spotlight as you can. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like they were off on a commercial or something. Yeah. So. And I wonder what that is. I wonder if like something changed. You yeah. know, they're like, "Hey, we don't have time for that," or something. Right? Did they do yeah. one of those uh, audience bits with the um, with the lady during that break or not? That might have been one of those. That might have been one of those. Yeah, I believe so. They did a couple Sarah, Sarah Schre- of the Sarah audience Schreider. breaks. Yeah, that was a nice addition. I thought it very nice. minor league <laughs> baseball, but you know, <laughs> they, they've, they've better been than doing nothing. that for a um, couple months now. A couple yeah. months now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the Pirates still do it, but then again, you did say minor league. Oh. Oh, I did go there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's a new season. We'll see what's going to happen. Hey, but... we'll see what happens. That's, that's a different show. That's right. somebody else's post. Okay. Springs <laughs> Eternal. Yes. Somebody did, did Somebody did pitch doing a minor league baseball oh, cast. I mean, that was. That might be a wrestler. Uh, anyways. <laughs> WrestleMania. There you go. There you go. Other big news. Musical guest. Other big news of a local front. Uh, Britt Baker, who's with uh, AEW. Mm. I said it right this time. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she was at uh, um, IWC this past weekend and has qualified for Super Indie. Mm. The first female participant in Super Indie. That is gonna, are you ready for this, Mike? Mm-hmm. Also including... Joey Ryan. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Also, Jonathan Grisham, also coming Excellent. back. Excellent. And uh, the retrosexual, uh, Alex Green. Excellent. <laughs> so, and so, the so, sounds like current sounds Super like Indie very, Champion, right? Current Super Indie Champion, which is Wardlow. Oh, yeah. It sounds like <laughs> a very uh, Your typical flippy indie. indie guy, you know? Yeah, Wardlow, hey, Wardlow is a flippy indie guy. He's an atypical flippy indie guy. He just happens to be like guy. a six foot four muscular uh-huh. flippy <laughs> indie guy. Um, he's a giant guy that does that does a swanton bomb and has definitely had a tryout with WWE already. Mm-hmm. So, or what, what was he on? Undercover Boss or something with uh, Stephanie when she was on it? Yeah, something. Uh, yeah, it, it was something like that. So I don't think I watched that episode. I haven't either. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I think he had more that got cut out of it too. So, <coughs> but anyways, okay. So, um, you have a switch on there. Do I really? You do have a switch. Okay, on there. I'm sorry. Sorry about the coughs, guys. We didn't give him the, the the full information. Yeah, I didn't get the full four one one. It's okay. And also <laughs> in a messed up any any news from um. The Pittsburgh area, actually. So uh, I, I I caught a video. This was this was shared from friend of a friend in the Indies. Um, there was a video that was going around on Saturday night, and then I love that it popped up on Fox News the next day. Out in Altoona, there's a Phoenix Pro, right? And there's a wrestler. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here for you guys. Wrestler Nick Manic McCune helps police detain a knife welding suspect at a Denny's. Okay, you know how we go to Denny's after our uh, our uh, shows there, right? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, mainstream Matt is very aware of this. And there's this over the shoulder video. One of the guys, from, and, and, and I watched. I, this is a no sound version, but there was another version on 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 Facebook. Uh, and you just watch like multiple. Like there's the wrestler on the on the on the right. If you're watching the video. This guy apparently came in and he had a gun on him and a knife in the Denny's and was threatening some of the patrons. And uh, they escorted him out, had police come, and uh, and, and again the wrestler was helping the police uh, detain this guy. So uh, the video- did, he, did he use a full Nelson or? Um, or it's just a lot of muscle. A shoot, the a ground. shoot, double Hit leg finish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and you see, there, let's see, there's cop number two. There's going to be a cop number three that comes uh, eventually in this video as well. Sorry. Triple H told me those cops are just independent wrestlers. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> right. I'm sure our friend Manic was shocked to see people, you know, approach as security slash law enforcement who were actually effective yeah. in uh, <laughs> their jobs. That were just over. being tackling dummies, and you know, in the uh, 
pro wrestling arena. This is how it happens in the real world. Oh, they just cuff them and take them away. They don't fight. They don't fire up and you know fight these six guys off. The guy <laughs> fights like the guy is handcuffed and he and he gets up and he's like trying to fight the cops. He gets slammed right back it, down. Yeah, there. no, it's yeah. They like say I watched this again with with running original running commentary that Fox did not include in their version of the video. So, oh, did Michael Cole say it's boss time? No, 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 no. <laughs> don't do drugs, kids. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> So, but I mean, you know, our our Denny's our Denny's um, post wrestling uh, adventures are not as interesting as no. Montero, apparently. So, uh, it's a very safe Denny's. So, and Nick is new to the wrestling scene. You've been around since October. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't know if you've run into anything like that yet. In I your haven't. Times. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I was telling you this earlier. Like, usually, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll stay for a little bit, but like, I'm usually a straight shot home because. I mean, it's an hour and a half drive mm-hmm. back, and I'm just like, by the time it's all over, I'm just like, all right, it's bedtime, it's bedtime, it's bedtime. You know what I mean? So I won't even stop to grab food or nothing. I'm just like straight shot back to Pittsburgh and lay my head down for a couple hours before I got to get up the next morning. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, there's there's still time, especially <laughs> especially if you start going out with that crew. Uh, so. <laughs> uh but anyways uh there's so there's your 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 kind of strange stories from the indies there this week um, um sorg, I love it. Mm-hmm. sorg we have we have one more strange story from the indies oh really yeah um and i'm calling them indies because as of right now that's what they are okay. um aew sorg yes uh you know your favorite t-shirt company i know yeah your favorite t-shirt company of mine um th- this is something I, I feel like some of our our mayhem crew should do um, they're looking to cast a character called the Librarian Sork. Mm. Okay. What you do is you uh, you submit through Twitter, I believe, mm-hmm. a 60-second promo of who the librarian is. Oh, God, that's going to turn out bad. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is for and, real? And, yeah, this is for real. And as someone who I've had conversations with about Civil servant wrestlers, Doc Remedy, paging Doc Remedy, <laughs> the librarian, is open for business. Yeah, and I'd like I'd like to echo what Nick just said and just say, God bless whoever is screening all those videos. Especially <laughs> <laughs> for I know I wouldn't even trust myself to do that. And and, and as people now who, who are familiar with the show know, I love to talk. But no, no, I'm not doing it. I can't. I, no. I, I think I, I think got no Dr. business. Everybody should do it. Is I it? think Chad should do it. I think um, Bobby should do it. I think mm-hmm. Rich should do it. I think Bobby's puppets should do it. Bobby's puppets should do it. Yes, categorically. Um, Sorg, Sorg. I, I think I think there's a lot of gold to be had here. Mm-hmm. I mean, is this going to be a gender specific, like? Role, I mean, because again, I mean, like, I, God bless whoever's going to have to go through all of those videos at you, the end of the day. As far as I know, it's like Spider Man; anyone can wear the mask. Mm. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. Wow. Well, well, you cast a wide net. You see if someone comes in. You know, get the people talking. Um, Sorg, you know who I think would be a great librarian? Hmm. Because we know he has an affinity for local history. Sawtooth Willie. Sawtooth Willie. Oh, I thought you were trying to segue me into a Professor Buzzkill commercial. No, no, no. I I, I think Sawtooth Willie. Oh, the hobo librarian would be great. You see, everyone's sending in videos that's just straight librarian. But if you put a mm-hmm. twist on it, you go hobo librarian. Yes. They're not ready for that. That's how you get them. That's how you get them. Sawtoothwilly.com. Hobo librarian. You try to be so- librarian from the future. You know, you try to be, you know, get the minds going here. I actually heard that Sawtooth Willie knew the man named Dewey, inventor of the Dewey Decimal System. We might have done a video on that. I can't remember. We did like a hundred of those. I, you know. It's easy to think of it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard he's starting a podcast. I don't know. Anyways, well, you know, how Tooth Willie is. Uh, yeah, he was. Oh, that's he, awesome. He's, he's got a couple episodes out there. Oh, that's beautiful. If you want to check that out? I do. Yes. Um, but you know, recording technology in the tunnels is not that great. 
Well, you see. Yeah. Well, you have to stand outside the Starbucks for free Wi-Fi. That is true. That is true. Starbucks. That's, that's the, the hobo Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. That's right. The Starbucks Sorg. <laughs> We're outside of Sorg. <laughs> hobo Media. Dark Web. <laughs> oh, the Hobo Dark Web. Uh, Tina Key <clears throat> saying uh, Young Bucks collecting tag team belts over at AAA just because. Well, they are a partner. So that's part of it. Anyways, you know what? Uh, how we fuel our mayhem here. It's with a perfect pepperoni pizza. Our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Right here, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates all around town. If you're around here, go check them out. Or as our unofficial campaign that we try to help with the Slice on Broadway expansion, if you got a Broadway in your town, take a picture of the street sign. Let them know where you're at, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter or Slice on Broadway on the Instagram, and let them know you want to Slice on your Broadway Help them expand and scout new locations wherever you may be across the con- continental United States, at least. Uh, sorry, Hawaii, because we know and, you want. And, yes. And Sorg, um, also about Slice on Broadway. If you, uh, during, during this time of Lent and reflection, if you do not have meat on your Fridays because you're a practicing Catholic, Slice on Broadway also has the perfect plain pizza. That's, that's, that is it true does. as well. It does. It does. It's you can never very go wrong good. with cheese. You can. Hmm? You can never go wrong with cheese pizza. No, you can't. No, you can't. They can't. Well, actually, you can. Sorg is taking me to a place where they went very wrong. With Some people pizza. do weird things with cheese, and um, no, Sorg, that's that's not pizza. No, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <sighs> that 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 was not pizza. That was he was a terrible was sheet cake. He That's was what that was. Sheet cake. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, not, not a sheets cake. A no. sheets cake. Mm, a sheets did cake. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll be back with Mayhem Mania after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. You know, if Mad Mike were really good at this game, He'd have made four moves by like Alex Cars has. I, I've four lousy moves. moves like Alex Cars has, but he would have made four moves by now. We love you, Alex. Anyway, <laughs> I'm ready. Let's get this kindergarten class on the road. <laughs> I feel like Billy Madison. We are here. It is Mayhem Mania. Main Street, Matt, take us away. Yeah, here we are. Hi, everybody. Um, well, I'll explain this to Nick, as you would Appreciate to a child. Nick, this is Mayhem Mania. It's uh, kind of a competitive thought experiment. The goal is to create the best of WrestleMania card possible. The catch is that you can't just use any person willy-nilly that you have to. No, no, no. You must use the uh, uh, these performers as they come in their current form, in their current contractual, uh, physical, emotional, psychological, pharmacological form. Basically, you are Vince McMahon with unlimited resources and zero self-control and by god you're going to make the best wrestlemania card humanly possible this year you're going to actually try um so if someone is contracted to ring of honor or new japan no can't do that but understand that there is a margin of flexibility here uh for as far as the people that you can use uh we have eight matches on our undercard the goal is to get eight matches up into our super card to do that a match must survive three rounds without being altered in any way. So far, we've got two matches that have graduated to the Supercard. Elias versus the Velveteen Dream, created by Sorgatron. I'm sorry. Elias versus Velveteen Dream, created by Sorgatron. No the, Sorg. No thes. And uh, also, the Triconics, Zelina Vega, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, versus the Tri-Pirates, Kairi Sane, Io Shirai, Asuka, created by Bobby F.J. Tom. I'll run down the rest of this stuff in a little bit. There will be five players. They will be the Riz, Tina, Sorg, Nick, and then Hey There Podna will be bringing up the rear under the stipulations. Did you say Riz? Yeah, the Riz. He uh, texted it in. Oh, he texted got it. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is round eight of Mayhem Mania. Next week is the Patreon in the Bank round, and then we're done. So my goal as your party host has been to try to keep this as fair and as equitable as possible. A few weeks ago, I came to the realization that because everyone and their mother is clamoring to make a move in Mayhem Mania this year, that really the most realistic maximum for any single person to make 
um, as far as moves go in Mayhem Mania, is three. So I have capped the total moves for all players at three. However, one player has manipulated the rules to his advantage and to our disadvantage. That was Alex Cars. He got four moves. But, so, basically what we're left with tonight, here, Sorgers, we're trying to scramble, see who else we can get in here, try to get everyone up to that third move. Mad Mike's been sitting on three moves for about a month and won't let me stop hearing about it. Tina's been sitting on three moves, but we had an opening this week, open up at the last minute, and Tina and Mad Mike were right there, but what am I supposed to do? Which one do I give the fourth move to, Tina or Mad Mike? It's like choosing your favorite child. I can't pick either one of them. They're both so good, Sorg. So I'm left in a pickle. I'm trying to find somebody else. We couldn't find anybody else, so Mad Mike graciously martyred himself and allowed Tina to go ahead so that now we can continue to feel sorry for Mad Mike, and Tina can come in and make a great move, I'm sure. Very right, honorable. Tina? Very honorable. Mad Mike is so honorable. We'll be back to make a mess out of this next week in Patreon in the bank. Mad <laughs> Mike, we love you. Um, anyway, the um, list of players this week will be The Riz, then Tina, then Sorgatron, then Nick, and then Podner. Did I already say that already? Yes. Probably yeah, did. Yeah, we've been over this. Great. Um... Uh, it, it, Nick, it, 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 basically, when it's time it, for it, you to make a move, you're basically allowed to make one change to the card. You can you can take out one match entirely, bring in a new match with entirely new people. You can switch one for one within the card. So if you want to get you know switch Becky Lynch for Braun Strowman, you can do that. Bing bing. Uh, you could take just one person out of the match, bring in another person. Uh, so uh, feel free to do that. There's also a one time use only subtract option. You can remove one single person from any of these matches, uh, but that's a one time use only. Um, also, I should tell you, Nick, that there are a list of people that you cannot use. You see, we give away these things called eliminators, mm -hmm. and it allows people to basically um, prevent uh, certain performers from being used at all during Mayhem Mania. So I'm going to give you the list of that so you do not uh, try to use any of these names. Uh, those names that have been eliminated are Ric Flair, Jeff Jarrett, Drake Maverick, John Cena, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, Bobby Fish, Charlotte Flair and Enzo Amore. Don't ask. It's been a long game. We're into our eighth round, ninth week. It's been hell. Here we are. Um, so let's run down the card. Are you ready? All right. Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper, created by Bobby F. J. Town. Cassius Ono and Cesaro, yes, the Kings of Wrestling, versus Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic versus the Colognes, don't ask, created by Alex Cars. <laughs> Leo Rush versus Kofi Kingston versus Mustafa Ali versus Braun Strowman, created by Matt Light. Walter, all caps, versus Samoa Joe, created by Rise Wrestling Tag Team Champion Ty Cross and noted duck former Ty Cross. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, created by Liddy, a mascot lion. The Miz versus EC3, created by Brandon. Brandon also created Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet. And finally, Mia Yim versus Becky Lynch, created by Tina. Is there anything I've forgotten to go over here, Sorgi? Great. Let's get down to business. Now, unfortunately, Riz is a little bit under the weather, but I asked him to text in because I did want him to uh, get a chance to make a move without um, before we get to Patreon in the bank. Mm -hmm. um, so the Riz's move is that he is going to remove... Oh, geez. They, oh, no. they just got on here. It's kind of upsetting to me. But we are getting rid of the colognes. Mm-hmm. And in its place, Riz play, will place the team of Kalisto and Lince Dorado. <laughs> I, think he what? Got a, I think he got a little swayed by that main event match that we watched last Monday night. Okay. Um, but, uh, Kalisto uh, and Lince Dorado will replace the Colognes. That's a lateral move at best. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's happening? Lucha House Party now on the card. Let's queue up Tina. Sorgi, you're on deck. All right, Tina. How you doing? How you feeling? Oh, we don't have you. Uh-oh. Uh oh Tina, your mic's not working. Uh-oh, we have set to go. Oh, nope. there she nope. There. Oh, nope. nope, nope, she's replacing. Nope. She's she's going to hand sign. No, yeah, there. Wait, right we right saw right. the unplugged yeah, plug. Oh, you're actually going to tell you, you can't change anything that's on the table. Anything above this anything line. Above this. Oh, we got we got some feedback going in, on no over there. Zone, so. uh oh right. Uh-oh. Tina, can you hear me? Nope. I think we're getting some feedback on her now. With the satellite delay on this. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> she is all the way out in Seattle. She so. is all the way out in Seattle. So <laughs> I think I think we have feedback. But Tina, if you can give your move. All the way across the country. 
Can you hear me? Yes. There yeah. we go. Okay. Yeah, you're good now. What you got, Tina? Uh, oh, no, you just oh, dropped out. There she goes again. I think we're getting a feedback loop, yeah. and it's cutting you out. When you put the headphones on, we lost you. Mm. Uh-oh. Tina, check your input on the headphones. You know, uh, this will be this is good for I'm us to get these bugs. Oh, yeah. There you go. Say it now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and make that um, Rollins versus Black versus Ricochet match into a four-way. Uh oh. Okay. And add ACH. Oh. New signee. I like it. Oh, they, well, that's the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> Board management's getting a little crazy here. Uh, Phil, 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 Tina has now added ACH, Ricochet, uh, uh, Alistair Black, and Seth Rollins. Yeah, let's see if we can get this athleticism straight through the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, Sorgi, you're up. Completely and bonkers. On deck. It's, okay, it's my turn now. Uh, looking at this, let's see. Let's see. We got Leo, Kofi, Ali, Strowman. You know what? Let's let's just let me replace Braun Strowman. Oh no! And because this is an official official move, we can do this now. He signed. Let's get all the light up guys, all the flippy guys in there. I think we need a DJ. Add DJ Z mm -hmm. to that four way match. I love it against Ali, Kofi, and Leo Rush. Sounds good to me. Speaking of getting that athleticism up, right? Hashtag electric mayhem. There we go. Electric mayhem. Make it happen. Electric mayhem mania. Beautiful. Light well done, Sorgi. Light it up. Nick, does this make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's see what you got. Okay. So here's the question. Can I edit a match that's already been edited? Yes. I okay. encourage you to okay. do that. <laughs> so on Tina's match, yeah. I kind of uh -oh. want to drop it as a four-way. Make it as a triple threat tag team match. I can't do that. You can't do that? I can't let you change, change the configuration of the okay, match. Okay, so it has to be I can let you take one person out of this existing match. Or take you can one put out. one person, or you can add another person in and make it a final. But, but that's pretty much your limitation on that. Okay. No stipulations either? I can't let you do steps. We're saving that for okay. next week. Okay. Yep. yep. Can we add Jeff? Jeff who? Hardy. Yes. Into the, into the match. This one? Yeah, make it a final way. Okay, you're on. Sounds good to me. Oof. How you feel about that, Tina? Did you feel like you were under the gun there? A little bit. Oh, she dropped out. Not going to lie. We'll find out in the chat room how she feels about that. Uh, aren't you glad you Tina's came probably on? not going to be happy because there's no more Alex Carr's rule. <laughs> that is right. No Alex Carr's yeah. rule. Um, we'll see. Maybe I can come up with a... I'll have to check well, the she, rule she's book. She's coming back for Patreon anyway. So yeah, she's coming back. There's some way... I'll have to check the rule book and see if there's some way to compensate Tina... In this oh, uh, kind of a scenario, <laughs> the rule book. It's very voluminous. I we'll have to consult the lore, and uh, uh, let's bring in uh, Dave Podner. Podner. Okay. Hey there, Podner. Okay. So I knew being last, there could be tons of moves that could happen that could mess up any plans I had. And did that happen? Um, in a way, yes. I had tons of moves planned. Shit, look at that uh, piece of paper. Uh, okay. Tons of news plans and prepared. tons of things set up here. Yep. Okay. So I knew I would need some <laughs> even higher level math than Steiner math. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I broke out. I broke out the calculus book. Uh -huh. Okay. I broke out the differential equations, the partial differential equations. I broke out all that. Then I thought, wait a minute. Did We're supposed to. What was that? Did you get an abacus? Almost. I oh. broke out the old TI-85 calculator from college. Ooh, mm. Nice. Okay. I love that wow. thing. I love I, that I, thing. I was a TI-83 plus man myself. Okay. But then I thought, we're supposed to think like Vince McMahon. Right? With, with, with zero self-control and unlimited Exactly. Resources. So I had to grab down. And I had to get the grapefruits. He's holding grapefruits, guys. I had to get the grapefruits. What the hell? <laughs> So I, I love prop comedy and mayhem mania. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. We're going to get rid of the Debray 
Rowan and Bray versus Luke match. Ooh, that's a smart call. That's a smart call. Whoa. And I'm going to make a fatal four way tag match. Jesus Christ. God. Okay. Hold no. on. Give 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 yeah, that a second. It's, it's all right. Give that a okay. second. I'm ready. I'm ready. Just write it at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, You're George. making Thanks, that work. Oh wait 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 wait. I'm going to make really work now because this is going to be real life couples. <laughs> this is great. I love real it. life couples. That's what I wrote down. Everyone who I could find who was a real life couple. Oh, I love where this in is WWE. Going. Oh, this is going. Who was either how not many people? On the board. How many people are going to be in this match? So we're going to have eight people. All right. This Jeez. is going to great places. Oh God. And people who were not already signed, who were dating people who were in WWE, i.e., Doctor Baker. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. starting off from NXT, Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. Yes. Already on board. Then, going to Mr. and Mrs. Or I should say Mrs. and Mr. Wrestling. Yes. We got Johnny Candice. Yes. Then we're going with Nikki and Killian from Sanity. And ending up with Sarah Logan and Ray Rowe. I like it. I like it. This sounds like a bar. Matt, 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 you have to repeat that for Matt. Where were you at on this? He's on. She, he's on Dane and Cross, and he's on. He's, this, sounds, this sounds like a damn barn burner. I love it. it, it this wow. is going to be. This would be crazy wild. The newlywed game from hell. Dave, Dave <laughs> if I get to graduate a match from the undercard next week, mm -hmm. that, that's the one I'm talking about. I love that. That's, Thank you. Like I said, it it took. The grapefruits for inspiration. Let's make sure I got this right. Bianca Belair and Montez Ford versus Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae versus Killian Dane and Nikki Cross versus Ray Rowe and Sarah Logan. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Nice. Bobby says I ain't even mad. Uh, <laughs> Tina was saying in response to the movie before uh, that, that she's got like deep plans or something, I think it said. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah. There's, this is going to be really interesting next week. Um, yes, next week is and, Patreon and in the Bank. Mm -hmm. um, Sorgi, I've um, discussed this already mm -hmm. with you. Um, there's going to be um, tiers, tiered abilities based on your Patreon generosity. Um, there will also be uh, concessions given to the uh, longer tenured Patreons of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, I will detail. I will go through all of these tiers. And all of these uh, rewards and abilities and attributes and skill trees in great detail on Talking Mayhem Mania coming up on this uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube channel. Let's run down the card one more time. <laughs> My guest will be Mad Mike because, damn it, he deserves it. He's been through enough. All right, here's the matches. But you're going to throw his groin out by saying it. Cassius Ono and Cesaro <laughs> versus Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic versus Kalisto and Lince Dorado. Lateral move by the Riz. Leo Rush versus Kofi Kingston versus Mustafa Ali versus DJZ. <laughs> created by Sorg. Walter versus Samoa Joe, created by Ty Cross. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, created by Liddy. The Miz versus EC3, created by Brandon. Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet versus ACH versus Jeff Hardy, created by our boy Nick. Mia Yim versus Becky Lynch, created by Tina. And finally, Bianca Belair and Montez Ford versus Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae versus Killian Dane and Nikki Cross versus Ray Rowe and Sarah Logan, um, created by Dave Potter. And also on Talking Mayhem Mania, I'll tell you about the last time something like this happened. Remember it, Sorg? The last time we had a match like this? That yeah, came and up? And it was a great it, match. And then it kind of happened. <laughs> it kind of happened. Right. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. And with that... Hey, guys, you know, uh, those that do not <laughs> learn from the history of Mayhem Mania are doing the repeated as we are going to talk about on Talking Mayhem Mania. And uh, thankfully, Professor Buzzkill is uh, here to make a learning fun. Our good friend, a friend of the network, I had to hang out with him a couple of days ago. He's got uh, some great stuff going on over there. Professor Buzzkill dot com making learning history entertaining humorous through his blog and podcast and his youtube channel now 
Go check out there. Some familiar faces might be popping up there on the YouTube channel that you might know here on the Mayhem Show soon, including uh, the latest, uh, 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 I think, record-breaking episode of Jesse Jones and the Civil War uh, this week, uh, talking about Irish things that are actually British, getting you guys set straight for St. Patrick's Day this past weekend, and so much more. Check them out at ProfessorBuzzKill.com. All right, guys, it is that time of the show where we find out what you learned from pro wrestling this week. I know some of you probably learned a little bit about from that last segment uh, as well. Who wants to go first? Anybody? Anybody have something they learned? I learned that Sorg doesn't know who Jesse James is. I mean, I don't know who Jesse James is. You just called him Jesse Jones. Jesse Jones? Yeah, it does say Jesse James. Look at that. Sort of who Jesse James is. He he he's saying with my baby tonight. Sorry, with sorry, my baby. Exactly. Tonight. Yes, Road Dog Jesse James. Exactly. Well, you know, you know. Um, podcast. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, let's see. Uh, Bobby of FJ Town learned that Baron Corbin isn't worthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, you just learned that, Bobby? You haven't been paying attention. <laughs> the world's largest substitute teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about you, mainstream Matt? What'd you learn from wrestling? Uh, I, I learned running this uh, Mayhem Mania thing. It sounds fun at the beginning, and then you get to week eight, and you're just like, I, I don't know anymore. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what else. I don't know what else I really learned from wrestling this week. I know I, I know I slept through part of Raw again, which is never a good thing. But uh, uh, I guess that's a sign of things that are happening there. But I never fall asleep when I'm at the Raw, or when I'm. You know, watching on TV, very easy. It just kind of goes off. WrestleMania is going to be long as hell. I learned that longer than last year. So I'll probably be taking a nap during that this year, too. Which well, which match should I take a nap through? AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Aww. Aww. It's not even a question. As long as you wake up in time to see Randy catch AJ from the springboard 450 into an RKO, that's all you yeah. need. <laughs> Like the Seth Rollins match, right? Wake, Man, Mike, me up, wake me up when the gif happens. Yes. <laughs> Man, Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, God. Um, I learned that Roman Reigns doesn't actually powerbomb people. Oh? What? Like, if you think about it, have you ever seen Roman Reigns bend someone over in a traditional powerbomb form, pick them up from their from their waist, and powerbomb them? I no, but I've seen it done from the corner. That's still counts, from the corner it? is different. All he has to do is just grab and walk forward. Mm-hmm. It's like a running power bomb kind of situation. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So traditional power bomb. Something I observed. Something I learned. <laughs> so it's like a jackknife power bomb. You're thinking, right? So yeah. Okay. Never seen him do it. Hey, partner. What'd you learn from wrestling? <sighs> I was gonna go with someone who we don't want to talk about, but I decided to go with. Not learned, but relearned. The Chad Gable we need is out there. Mm-hmm. We need the America Alpha version of Chad Gable. Ready let him be goofy. Let him be that. Let him be the best damn wrestler on the show as he can be. Did you guys notice that, like, I mean, this has been going on for how many months now? The whole, you know, glorious Gable and Rude. He just looks so awkward coming out in that robe Mm -hmm. i mean i'm not gonna say that he hates it he's trying to make it work yeah he's trying real he's doing what he it looks like someone's going out with his big brother like to the zoo what like the 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 big brother program oh okay i got you okay that that struck a chord big brother big sisters like yeah not big brother cbs no not big brother (laughs) cbs no but like they like they have to have matching outfits. They have to do the same things. Like Bobby Roode's entrance is not meant for two people. That's the entire point of it. He's glorious. Like, by they himself. had to buy a second Lazy Susan. <laughs> they did, and I got to see it set up last time. Nick, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Um, booking is going to be hard. <laughs> um. I mean, just just looking, I mean, this is all, I mean, obviously it's a mock, but at the same time, like, trying to come up with, like, the the best possible scenarios for these bookings, not even to, you know, who's going over, but just 
getting the matches built to to begin with. Jesus Christ. I Again, I'm sorry, Tina. Uh <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this this would just be the most nerve wracking, uncomfortable experience ever. And I just got you guys in here compared to you know people breathing down my neck. Hey, what are you doing for me this week? Mm-hmm. I would not want to do this mm-hmm. at all. Just so give me a microphone. Tell me I'll go out there and what to say, and mm-hmm. I'll be fine. Well, also theoretically, you wouldn't only have to book one match on the show, and you'd be booking an entire card. That's so. what I'm saying. I feel for the guys who are doing that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not sure who who all has their hand involved at Black Diamond. I know Rick, of course, has a major hand in it because I mean, it's his. That's his baby. Um, but God, just you know, the fear of what are you? What are we doing this week? What's my character doing this week? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I don't think I'd ever really want anything to do with that side of it. I learned that you can have an entire show with three tag team matches and not a single tag. I believe everything at IWC 18 was Lucha Rules. <laughs> I, officially or unofficially, they had a four-way tag, tag title match. They had a uh, eight-man tag, and I don't think there was a single tag on it. And then, they, wow. and then the, the main event with uh, DJ Z, burr, 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 burr. thank you, uh, in, in the tag match was announced as Lucha Rules, which means tags are not necessary. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, which was great for me because then I didn't have people standing in my way on the corners but as a video person. But uh, there's that. Also, the um, cameraman exercises. Uh, several people <laughs> have posted the gif of uh, Seth Rollins hitting Drew with the chair and you're watching the cameraman like follow them. Like, you know, very animated mm. along with it. Man, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too much action. Uh, but interesting, nonetheless. Alex Carr has learned out in the chat room uh, that he managed to make a Raw title storyline take up t- TV time on both Raw and SmackDown and still manages to be good with uh, Rousey, Becky, and Charlotte. Mm. 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 We'll stretch that. All we'll right. stretch that. All good right. is a overstatement. Well, one of the better things going on right now. Alex Miller uh, learned that a hockey player that plays for his hometown team is from where the million dollar title was made and his father helped make the title. Oh, wow. Hmm. Does Virgil stalk you too? Oh, God. Uh, mm. Bobby of Town <laughs> learned that. Oh, yeah. Baron Corbin is a word. We already did that one. There was another learned in here, I, I thought. Oh, yeah. Alex What's says that? he thinks he learned that uh, uh, Dave Potter has bigger grapefruits than Vince McMahon. Hey! Wow. That's Dave <laughs> you Potter. You know it, pal. You know it. Dave Potter, the Tiny Shutter podcast. Oh, he put, oh, he put <laughs> them in his mouth. Wow. That's... You, you can put your own grapefruits in your mouth? Well, he's not gone. quite, but... Mm. It's not like he hasn't tried. Well, uh, anyways, Nick Farah, thank you for joining us here on the show. Not a problem. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, you're with uh, Black Diamond Wrestling out in West Benwood, West Virginia. Yes, sir. And uh, anything else coming up? Um, I have Fight Society on the 13th of mm-hmm. April. Oh, they're in McKeesport, PA. If you guys are in the area, um, I'm supposed to stop at Angel Gate this coming Saturday. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what my role is going to be there yet. Um, but I'm more than excited for that opportunity. And then this coming Sunday, uh, MVP, Mon Valley Pro Wrestling. Did I get that right, MVPs? I think so. Yeah, um, I'll be announcing for them as well out of the Diamond Plex um, with uh, Jay Roo, who Jay Roo's the promoter for that as well. Okay. Um, just a whole bunch, and I, I couldn't be more excited for this all. I mean, this is, again, I, I tell everyone – they look at me like I'm crazy, but this is just humbling mm-hmm. to, you know, I, I'm quote unquote, according to, you know, the, the Di- Black Diamond page, the voice of Black Diamond now. I It's just, it's it's surreal to me. And I love it. So awesome. I can't wait to see where this goes. I know, uh, Bruto Bob Evans is going to be a part of the next Black Diamond show that you'll be yep. a part of, too. He's going up against Beastman. Mm-hmm. And that's a promotion I just had. You know, DJ Z, who we mentioned, was there for the 15th anniversary last June. Mm-hmm. So a lot of fun stuff going on there. Yeah. So good to see. Uh, Mainstream Matt, 
Yes. 1T on the Twitters. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for Talking Mayhem Mania. Yes. Look for it on the YouTubes and your podcast feeds. And, of course, thanks, Mad Mike. Thanks, Dave Potter. Thanks, Producer Missy. Thank you, all of you, in the chat room. And we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.